On this episode of ACD Designs Garage, we're going to show you how to take a bunch of scrap metal and turn it into your first MIG welding project. Pretty rad, ain't it? Here we go. Alright guys, today we're starting out our super fun rad little project. Today we're going to do a little metal art and this is kind of like a, for you guys that are just beginning and stuff to use some of your skills. Maybe if you went through some of the videos I've done teaching you how to MIG weld and all that good stuff. We're going to throw something together to be your first project that you can actually make a little moolah off of. So we're going to do a little metal art piece using just scrap junk laying around. Um, Using a railroad spike here, you can find these at, uh, I think I found this antique shop or something, or probably go on eBay or something and find them. I don't know if you can source them on Amazon or not, but just look around on Etsy and places like that, you can find your old railroad spike. We we'll use that for the body, a piece of, like we use all the time for our weld testing coupons, some eighth inch thick by two inch flat bar. And I just got some little random scrap raw here. Matter of fact, this was some painted stuff that we had took off of something. This is around, well, let me see what it is. All right, it's hard to hold the camera measure. This is quarter inch rod and this is a three sixteenths. You need just something to a hair smaller because basically the bigger rod's gonna be for his uh, arms and legs. And then this uh, smaller three sixteenths is gonna be for his fishing rod. So, and also we got some old uh, TIG rod. I'm have to get some just a little longer than this. This is going to be the line for the fishing rod. Uh, some, I think these are uh, 1032, just some uh, flat, regular old nuts you can use. These are going to be like the eyelets and stuff along the bottom of your fishing rod. Crank for the handle. Of course, we need a big deep sea fishing reel. We're going to chop all this off, but first things first, we're going to go over to our little uh, wire wheel in here in the other room and get most of this rust we can off of this and start prepping some stuff. I'll go ahead and we'll go over and chop this off so we can use this for the reel. I've sold tons of this metal art stuff. It's really fun. You can be as creative as you want to and just use up a bunch of scrap instead of selling it for 10 cents on thousand pounds or something because you ain't gonna make nothing that way. But yeah, it's be cool little stuff you can put on Etsy and stuff like that and sell it. So also, as usual, today I'm going to be doing, you know, I, I TIG a lot of these on some of them, but we're going to be doing like more of a beginner, so I'm going to be using my Art Captain MiG 200 with 023 wire in it, and uh, we're going to be running a 7525 argon carbon dioxide mix at about 18 CFH. So, let's get in here and get these units here prepped. I need to take this one and cut that off. We'll get that and wire brush that. All right, what we're using here is probably a day gone. I don't know, it's, it's got to be at least 40 years old bench grinder with the old wore out wire brush. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses and stuff because these things will come out and they will poke you in the eyeball. And we're just going to knock the rust off if you got a blast cabinet, which I do, but I figure more of you guys have like a wire brush set up like this. So we'll try to use stuff that you use and not some specialty tools. Next, we're going to be uh, taking this socket head. That's probably about a eh, 7 sixteenths, maybe a half inch bolt. Just what, I just looked at this and thought that was proportionate to what I thought it needed to be. It looked like a saltwater fishing reel. So we're going to cut it right here. Just cut the threaded part off. Like I said, keep all the stuff. Get you a little bin for your uh, metal art stuff, and you'll be surprised what kind of stuff you'll keep now. Cutting this stuff right here, you can chuck it up. The other stuff we're going to cut with the cutoff wheel in there, so I ain't going to go back and forth. But be careful cutting these with the quarter bands and stuff. Make sure you got your good push block to push against it because you get in here tight. You, this thing here will chew your fingers up. <laughs> All right, now we got to figure out our uh, how long we want our legs on here because they'll just come, you know, like that. There we'll weld them. Usually, what I do is maybe half of the the body length. We can cut them off now. These are gonna have a little bend, like he's leaning back. We're gonna put a little bend in the legs. 
like he's leaning back reeling that big old fish in so i figure about half the body length is a good place to start you can always cut it off more so we're gonna cut two of them about that long in there so i'm gonna go grab my soft jaws and uh i'll link them in the description below like a lot of these tools and stuff all these tools and stuff that i can will be linked below in the description from my amazon affiliate account don't cost you guys anything extra it just puts them in a easy place to get to and uh helps the channel out just a little bit like i said make a very small percentage off a of qualified purchase all right guys these are the magnetic soft jaws these are plastic they got little magnets in here and basically to put them on they just they just stick like that they're soft i mean you can't crank down on them but for what we're doing i'm gonna go off of that side over there it keeps from messing stuff up and it's got little angle holes and stuff you can clamp stuff in but for now i'm gonna put this out here and mark it i think what we're gonna do is this is the bigger this is the quarter inch rod i'm gonna go ahead and uh just run it out probably five or six inches and uh that way i ain't got to clamp and reclamp but you don't have to you know you don't have to clamp real tight because these are like some kind of soft rubber plastic something or another so you're gonna come out here and uh get two of them cut cut that into two inches leave the line cut that into four inches leave the line and that'll be our two legs so let's get our uh, grinding shield on because you do want to be safe with this with using these death wheels here these are the I think these are the benchmark abrasives. These are the thin ones. I like theirs, not sponsored or nothing by them, but they work pretty good. So I'm gonna go grab my benchmark abrasive uh, grinding shield. That thing works great too. I like it. Uh, the big thing with these, they are very dangerous. They'll come off, they'll stick. I saw them do stuff that's very bad. Some of my friends got hurt with them. You drop them, don't ever reuse them. If they get a bend in the blade or crack or crunch, or you step on it, don't try to straighten it. They'll explode and they'll hurt you. And also, don't force them. They will last a long time if you don't force them. Because if they get in a bind and stuff like that, that's what I do. I like, now I will say using using the air tools are not as bad because they don't have the torque that the big electric ones do, like the DeWalt's. The DeWalt's do work better. They don't slow down none, but I feel just a little safer with these because, like I said, they don't have the torque. They'll stop if they get in a bind it up or something like that. So. I was kidding about the MC Hammer, didn't you? I don't know how many ounces this thing is. It's a decent sized ball peen. So we're going to take and knock them over uh, 45 degrees, maybe. Something like that. Depends how big the fish is. I mean, he's really getting in on it. This is a big fish. If I was catching a fish that big, I'd be bent back about that far. I used to do a ton of this metal art stuff. It's just, I'm telling you guys, it's just so fun. If y'all stay to the end, I'll break out some of the metal art that I've done. I've done a rose video years ago if you want to go back and check it out, the metal rose. Yeah, these things are fun. You can do what you want. See, look, we got, got that leg leaning back. Let's see how far it's going to lean back. Oh yeah, that mug right there, he done caught a big old black fin tuna or something. So basically, we'll just tack these legs on and uh, figure out what angles we want. Play with it a little bit. Like I said, if we get these welded on, it's not bent enough. I mean, you can, if you got a torch, heat it up and bend it. It makes it a lot easier. Or you can put him in there before we, you know, these are tacks. We're not going to full weld nothing until we like it. So let's get his legs here. Get at least one of them. One of his legs put on here. I think that looks about right. Let's see. He done, maybe he's shark fishing out there. Maybe that's what we're doing. We're surf fishing for sharks. All right, let's get our arc captain set up. I got it set up. Let's see what it's on. Put that on. Cut the gas on. 
I'm just basically gonna set this up. This has no structural steel. We're at 17.3. So I'm gonna go up to about, and we'll go up to 19. 19 one, I have a pad in here somewhere. what I do with it? I like to keep a little cheat sheet notebook here. Uh, it's got my seven steps, blah, 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 blah. There's my three sixteenths, 19.1 and 6.0 on the wire feed speed. So we'll put it at that. We might have to turn her down just a, just a wee bit. So we need to, yeah, it's on six two. We'll call that good. Yeah. If you guys can see it, them little sparkles in the end of my finger. That's metal and it hurts. I'm about to pull that out real quick. We're gonna get him back right there and just put a tack, guys, where you can modify this. I would really do this. Maybe I can hold it down like that. Shock me! Now you're getting a little, uh. Just to have a good ground. So, anyhow, wear gloves. So right here is gonna be the man. He's, he's reeling in that fish. We're going to spread his stance out just a little bit. He's going to be like that because he's digging in that sand, boy. That thing's about to pull him in. So, to get this, we'll put my gloves on just in case it wants to wake me up again. Right, spread his stance out just a little. Said, you just want to get this stuff tacked together. So he, he's digging, he's leaning back, yeah. So now his a uh, you know, fishy rod about like that. So we're about to put a bow in this thing. Determine the size of the fish is uh, you know the bow, so we're gonna have to get that. Do we need those arms yet? Because basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get him all built up and tacked together and get him tacked on this into it. I think that angle there is pretty good. Let's see, his arms, we'll have to bend them around. They'll come down, they'll grab the fishy rod. So, let me see how I want to do his arms. We're going to have to put a good 90 degree bend on it for the arms. It, try to keep it in kind of proportion, guys, like his shoulders. You know, probably the length of your neck is the width of your shoulders, if that makes anything. So his neck's about that. He might be a stubby neck, so we're going to... I will give you a quick secret though. The longer you make it, the easier it are to bend. So we might go ahead and cut these a little longer, bend them, and then we'll cut them off the length. Make them look right. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and bend us a couple 90 degree. We're gonna, let's cut some more. Those bent pretty fairly easy. We'll cut four inches. So we'll do two, two inch cuts real quick. Y'all don't need to see that. Y'all didn't saw me cut that. So I'll bring you back in when we start to do the bending. All right guys, we're probably gonna bend Kind of like the legs because if you figure your shoulder here, we're not going to try to build that. The only thing we're going to try to build is like this section here. And we can just lay this piece up against and just put a big spot well there and radius it. So it gets a little complicated trying to, there's no need to make it hard. So we're just going to lay the piece up against, put a big old fat well, that'll be his shoulders. Maybe he won't have many shoulders. But we're going to, many shoulders. Maybe he won't have broad shoulders. Maybe he needs broad shoulders. Anyhow. We're going to do these about in half like the other ones where we're going to do our band at. I cut these at two inches, so we'll show you how precise we're getting. That looks like the middle, pretty close. So we're just going to keep these as close as possible. I'm going to drop something. If you watch my videos, I'm gonna drop something. So here we go. 
I think he needs some broad shoulders. Carrying the weight of the world. You can't tell I grew up watching Bob Ross. Bob Ross is my hero. So let's get him right here. We'll give him some happy little arms. So, get Mr. MC Hammer out. We'll do a 45. We'll try that real quick. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just do a quick, really light tack in about the position that we can cut off. So I'm gonna put it back here on the back side where we can take a little cut off wheel. And uh, you know, it would probably be smarter to tack on the sides. That way we can bend them a little bit however we want them, but I think that's pretty good. Let's do one on the side over here. Get it squared up. I think I need a little more heat. We're at 19.6 on the voltage and 7.5 on the wire feed speed. That should be pretty good. So now we got him in the gangster lean here. So, got the rod tip up where it needs to be. That arms, I don't think we're going to cut any off. We just need to figure out how high we want them up and down. I'm going to say probably right in there. So maybe what we're gonna do first, you see his reel's gonna be down like this and it's gonna be like he's just cranking that unit in there. I ain't going through trouble making fingers. You can, I've done it before with a little small rod. Takes forever and nobody really cares. But you just kind of make it look like he's reeling. So we're gonna taper them down like basically they're gonna be down like that. So I think I'm gonna get the rod Get his rod built now. So we're gonna come up here. We're probably gonna put a big old bow because that's a big old fish. So now how are we gonna bend a big old arc? Hmm. We'll get our rod built and get it in place intact and then we'll just pull his arms up to it. That'll be the easiest thing, I think. And then we'll cut these tacks off if we decide to put the fishing hole in here. I ain't decided yet whether I wanna do that or not. But. He's looking about right. That's what, you know, I'd look like if I could actually catch some fish. I do enjoy fishing, but I'm just no good at it. All right. All right, guys, well, I found my tubing bender. Most of you guys are built with one of these. I'm gonna try it first without this. But your good old kneecap, it's got a couple different radius dies. You got a larger radius here. Some of us have larger radius dies than others. You got a small one here. So I think for the radius, I'm gonna go in the middle and uh, see what we can get. So we just gonna just work it a little bit. Pretty good radius. Well, uh, Maybe too much, we'll see. But we need to line it up to land over here where we want it. So we're gonna go on the smaller radius here. And uh, we can always take a little out of it. Looks like a good spot right there. guys i just ground a little taper on the end that's about all i've done on it so what we're going to do is lay this out we'll kind of get us a view here how we're going to want it main thing is to keep this pretty much lined up because we got to come back and put our little uh our little rod eyelets on here with these little 1032s we'll come back to about right here and then i'm gonna probably have to get a longer piece this is stainless 1 16th filler wire and i'm gonna run this is gonna be your line so I need enough to run through the little eyelets and then come down here. We may make us, instead of going too crazy with the hole and stuff, we may make us just some little fish. Looks like he's coming up out of the water with a hook in his mouth. I don't know. We just gonna roll with it, but 
I think that angle looks pretty good. And then we'll come off of here with his uh his arms holding the rod, and then we'll have a the rod base or the reel actually will be under here. So we just want to make sure we got the rod out far enough and that's still warm. Let's just zap it on there real quick. All right, here we go. Watch your eyeballs. All right, because we're going to cut this rod off. It's too long. It's not too bad right there. Let's get down here and look at it. All right, his arms. Down here. That's fairly realistic. And then we'll get our reel. I think that looks the right height for his shoulders and stuff. We'll kind of keep it in proportion. So, grab my Sharpie. We'll put a mark here for the top of the shoulder. Now I'm gonna try to get his arm tacked about where I want it, roughly. Here we go. That'll rust, it takes a little bit more heat to get in there. We'll try that real quick. If we need to take it off, we'll take it off. Okay. Let me zoom y'all out so you can see. So now what we'll do, we might need to bend his arm down just a hair more. I think his reel needs to be down about right here. So we'll give her a couple little tappy taps like that. And then we'll, yeah, his other arm will be holding the rod up. So we'll get it out on this side. Yeah, I kind of like that. I'm going to go ahead and tack that while we got that here. All right, what y'all thinking of that? That's pretty cool. That's about right. Then we'll start putting our eyelets on here. I got six. I don't think I'm gonna need them, but I'll put that off the end like that. One, two, three, four, five. Well, six probably be good. All right, real quick, we're gonna get his other arm, and basically all we're wanting to do is kind of uh, keep the shoulder at about the same height. Maybe he's got it dropped down just a hair. Let's tack it and look at it. I mean, that dude looks like he is fighting a big old fish. Look at him. He's like, man, this thing ain't big. We'll have to make him some cool looking fish or something coming out of there. All right, this is the filler rod we're using 308L. This is what I use for my, my TIG welding, stainless. Let's see here. I think I got some shorty shorts in here. Let me do it this way because I can. We're going to have to. A little more, a little more, a little more. Can't put it over this hole here where I can get it down in there. And uh, all right, that line there is looking pretty good. Anyways, y'all see what I'm getting at? I can I can manipulate it. And it's gonna come down here, and we'll clip it off and put it in the fish's mouth. We'll make something that don't look like some kind of weird fish. I do wanna do that. All right. I think that's good enough. 
That's gonna hang below. Same radii and everything's gonna look good. All right, that's pretty good. We'll get our eyelets welded on, then we'll make our evil fish and we'll be done. Do them like that. That's pretty close, man. I know I'm getting in your way. Yeah. Not really a magnet guy, but those are pretty cool. Like I said, I'll put the link down below to Art Captain. Save you a little bit of money. I got a little coupon code, so maybe you can scoop you up some of these. See how it spits and sputters? That's why I don't like to use magnets. That'll be okay. Here's one. I'll find a different way to hold it. All right, just a couple more of these. These are probably the worst part of this project is putting these on. I know this would be the fun part. Although the it does work good. See if I can halfway line it up. Don't grab that one. I laid it on the side, it'd be easier. I usually figure out how to do stuff after I'm about done with it. There we go, maybe I can do this. Well, it's barely held. It's probably gonna break when I do this. Yeah? Hey, there we go. like to use my mid pliers, dang don't you? I don't like to use my mid pliers like this because it boogers them up, but I'll buy some more if I have to. Ah, come on now, babies. I don't suggest doing that, but I can't flip my helmet down and all that good stuff, so. Alright. Well, that's pretty good. Now we'll run our line down to it. And we'll be almost done. I'm going to go around and after we get everything figured out, we'll just finish welder up. And that'll be it. Alright, now we're going to try to get my stainless filler run through the little eyelets here. Yeah. 
That's why I use stainless. It won't kink the back of this uh, stiff. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. There we go. And then we'll get this halfway straightened back out. <laughs> Check that out. Now I got them a little fishy coming out of the water. We'll cut this off and I'll just uh, probably going to tack it to the reel. I'll pull it on down. Put that in the fishy's mouth. Looking pretty rad. Alright guys, cut me a little fishy out here. We're going to try to round him off a little bit, put him coming out of the water. I'm probably just going to tack the line to his head. We're not going to put anything, but I think it needs a little, yeah, this dorsal fin's a little high. I'm going to cut that off some, but we're going to get this clamped over here and ground real quick and uh, make our fish. I ain't going to spend a whole lot of time. I might just take a center punch and knock a hole right there and just take it with the cutoff wheel and cut some gill plates on her and that's enough detail. Guys, here's what I've come up with here. Our little sharky guy. I just tacked a little fin on him, and we're going to tack him there. I think we're going to tack that little bit of stainless filler to his bottom lip. And uh, we'll go back and re weld these, and we'll be finished up. So let's get to doing a little arcing and a sparking. See, I think I'm going to do the fish first. About where I want him. Grind that flat where it don't rock around. Yeah, that's up enough. I don't know it's going to rock around. So now, I'm going to come over here and try not to burn this thing off. Try not to burn this thing off. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my heat on the lip here of the fish and then just let it roll over to it. Hopefully. Yeah. I knew that was going to happen. I think it's going nowhere, but there, that ought to be good. He's hooked right now. We done sore lipped him. Look at that. Sharky coming out of the water. I think I'm gonna do one more tack on the bottom side. Sharky shouldn't go nowhere. Oh yeah, he's hooked. He ain't getting off. All right, let's do a quick zappy zap on the rest of him. And Mr. Fisherman, well, we do got to lop that off. Let's do that real quick.
I enjoy doing these little things like this. Just you can do what you want. There ain't no rules. And all I'm doing, I'm just building his shoulders out a little bit. We're just using the old zigzag method like we did on some of the videos. You just wash it back and forth. Put a little zap on his arm here. Get his hand wrapped around the rod. There, got his hand there. Like a more blind tack, yes, on the reel. trigger welding. We'll trigger weld the fish on here too. Guys, she's welded up. <laughs> yes, sir. There she is. Sore lip them all. I could name this one after my favorite YouTube fisherman, Richard Gene the Fishing Machine. That's him. That's what we're going to call him. Make sure if you ain't ever seen him, that dude's a hoot. So I'll put a link to his uh, YouTube channel below, Richard Gene the Fishing Machine. We're going to name this one Woo in honor of him. All right, guys, here she is. I think it turned out pretty dead gone awesome. And it goes to show you, I mean, you can put these things on Etsy. You can sell them. They're pretty quick to make, not hard. Get rid of your scrap stuff and make a couple dollars on her. But, yeah, I think she turned out cool. Like I said, I used to make a bunch of these. I'm going to go get a couple of my other art pieces and show them to you like I promised. And uh, get out there and make something, guys. It, a little bit of imagination and a little arcing and a sparking. Like I said, you can get this stuff done pretty simple. All right, guys, here's a couple I made uh, many years ago. I just never finished. I was going to build a, a Harley motor, and uh, that was the start of it. 
Looks like a pan just out of nuts and bolts and stuff. Uh, this is the top fuel hydro I was building. Now this is done out of all sheet metal. You can see down in there I just uh, hand shaped it and ticked it or you can make it together but you can see it's all raw on the inside but this is going to be my fuel motor. This is all made out of nuts and bolts and rod and that was going to be the engine on the back. I got several more. I've made flowers and roses but I always like my engines and car stuff. This is the first little fishing dude. I guess he could be fishing off the boat. But he decided to stand on the bank. But yeah, guys, like I said, your imagination, just go to it and do it to it. You guys can do it. Just If it don't look right or it don't fit, cut it off and re-weld it back on. That's why I'm not a woodworker. But anyway, hope y'all enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. Get out there and make something. And remember, guys, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you, so do we. God bless. We gone.